Now let's go straight to the story of Jericho because there are secrets there uh, of how the ark and how the priests and the trumpets, you look at the trumpets today, how they bring victory to God's people. Let's go right into it, Joshua. Uh, do you have verse 1? Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty man of valor. Mighty man of valor. Can you see the word I have given? Isn't it true that all of you who are believing God for your healing, all of you who are believing God for a breakthrough in your area of life, some of you sitting down here and saying, how long, Lord? When will my manifestation come? When, when will my son turn around? When, when, Lord? When, when will my daughter see the light? When, when, Lord? Notice I have given is past tense or future tense? Past, I have given you your healing. I have given you your Jericho. I have given you your relationship with your son. It's restored. I have given you, but Joshua can say, Lord, but where is it, Lord? I don't see it. Got a sea. There's a sea down there, right? See, I have given you Jericho. And he's thinking, but, but Jericho is securely shut up. It looks like no one can conquer it. It looks like no one can go in. By all natural appearances, by, by, by sight, it looks like you cannot do it. The doctor's uh, diagnosis, whatever it is, doctors do their best naturally. God does supernaturally. Amen. God is a God of miracles. But the devil is hoping that you walk by sight and not by faith. The Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. He's hoping that you say nothing is happening when actually something is happening. Even your disease, long before you saw it outside, it happened inside at the root. So God is starting with the root now. You understand? God could have destroyed Jericho by other means, by raising another army somewhere else and destroying them. God could have destroyed Jericho in numerous ways. God is God. But why did God choose the, the way that He did? What was the way, Pastor? All right, let's see God's way. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people, God gave him instructions. Now Joshua, the leader that told, told the people this, had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns. I just carried in my hand the ram's horn. Okay, can you see? <laughs> Amen? How do you get a ram's horn? Well, you have to kill the male sheep. It comes, females don't have this horn. Right? That's how you can tell a male from a female. And you have to kill the male to get the ram's horn. So, that tells us that uh, Jesus Christ had to die. He is the male sheep. Amen. And then, when we blow through this, we blow to proclaim His death. Why is there such victory when God's people blow this? Because it proclaims His death. Every time you take the Lord's Supper, you are blowing the ram's horn, so to speak. Now, today you can buy this, you can blow it all you want to and all that. There are people who teach they can blow and you know, great things will happen. I'm not going to dispute all that. I'm just telling you, be careful about going back to natural things when they actually point us. We're not called to go back to shadows when we have the substance. All right? And uh, you know what's the substance of this? We'll come to that. Okay, anyway, seven priests were holding this. And where were they? They, they were before the Lord. They advanced and blew the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Can you see? All right, the seven priests in front blowing the trumpet, blowing the shofar, rear guard behind. Okay, and the people went around the wall of Jericho. Now, many of you have been to Jericho. He went around the wall of Jericho. But the thing that Joshua told them, don't say anything. Just listen to the sound of the trumpet and carry the ark. Lift up Jesus and proclaim the Lord's death. Lift up Jesus, proclaim the Lord's death. Lift up Jesus, proclaim the Lord's death. It's important if you want your Jericho to fall, if you want that disease to be smitten, amen, by the Spirit of God, God's way of working is by preaching. It has pleased God. Don't ask me why. It has pleased God. Like, why, why did God ask the seven priests to have seven rams blowing the ram's horn? Because ram's horn proclaimed what? The death of the male sheep. Amen. Our Lord Jesus. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them who believe. By the foolishness of preaching to save them who believe. The Pastor Prince, uh, how can someone stand down there and talk and people's lives are changed? Eh, sounds so foolish, isn't it? Sounds so foolish, isn't it? 
and, and God used you some more. Yeah, that's even more foolish, isn't it? Yeah, everything that confirms God's word, I'm for it, man. I mean, by the foolishness of preaching, to save. The word save is sozo. And sozo is not just save, it's the word heal, deliver, and on and on, protect. It all comes by hearing preaching. Proclaim, listen to preaching, listen to preaching, listen to preaching. See, Pastor Prince, I've been listening to it for two days. Yeah, they surrounded the wall seven days. Does that mean that I'll get my manifestation on the seventh day? You missed the point. You can't, you can't play with God that kind of legalism, you know, legalistic games. Seven is number of perfection. God is saying, keep on hearing, keep on hearing, keep on hearing. Perfectly. Keep on hearing, keep on hearing, keep on hearing. And on the seventh day, when they shouted, the walls fell. And the walls fell flat. Hallelujah. And Joshua and his men went in. Amen. It's the only time they shouted out of their mouth. Their mouth opened and they shouted. On the seventh day, and the seventh day, by the way, they didn't circle one time. They circled the wall of Jericho seven times. Seven times on the day itself. Amen. And when they shouted the walls and, and they blew the trumpet, they blew the shofars. So what is God saying? God is saying, listen, listen to sermons that talk about Jesus and His death. And every time you do that, your wall is crumbling. Whatever that wall may be, that bondage is crumbling. It might look very big, thick, strong right now, but it's crumbling. It's decaying on the inside. It's dying by its roots. Amen. Keep on hearing. Uh, you know, uh, try, to, try to have, um, listen to something, okay? Have, have, you know, God has given this generation, you know, thank God for, uh, you know, Steve Jobs and all that. You have Apple, you have uh, your iNano, the very small one, very easy for you ladies to put inside. And, and you have your iPhone, you have your Androids, you carry everywhere with you. Amen? That's why we, 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 uh, we talk about my mobile app. All right? I recommend mine because I know me. I know what I teach. Amen? But you can, you can use anybody's and, and, and anyone else's and all that. And you don't have to worry about, about storing it, taking up space. You can store it in the cloud because that's where Jesus is anyway. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in the blue skies, amen? Mine is not the only good one. There are other good ones as well, but I know mine, mine is really good. <laughs> I say that by the grace of God, or else I won't be here talking, amen? So the thing is that you need to keep on hearing. Why? Because of Galatians chapter 3, look here. Therefore God who supplies, and the word supplies in the Greek is constantly supplying the Spirit to you and works miracles, also the same Greek tense used, constantly supplying the Spirit, constantly working miracles. Amazing! You know, these are two things that in the spirit, I salive it over. You know, like somebody salive it over food. We talk about food all the time. Where to find the best food and all that. Well, for me, all right, I salive it over verses like that. It tells you why God constantly supplies the spirit. Why God constantly works miracles. I want to have a family where God constantly supplies the spirit. You know, there's no leakage anywhere. You know, you say, well, he was once full of the Holy Spirit, but he leaked somewhere. You don't have to worry because constant supply of the spirit. Constant supply. You know, you switch on the faucet, all right, and leave your empty cup there. Very soon, it'll be filled. Not only filled, constantly supplied. Constantly filled. And it's very clean. Can I have a good amen? That's what it says. Then constantly working miracles among you. The word among you, uh, Greek word en, can also be in you, in your body, in your family. Among you and in you. Among is also among as well. God is going to work miracles around you, for you, in you, outside you, in your family, for uh, and together with you. Amen. Amen. Constantly working miracles. So even as I preach right now, God is constantly working miracles. Can I have a good amen? amen? So here it says, does God do it? All these things that God is doing, does God do it by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? Give me the answer. And hearing is present tense. Past or future? Present tense. It's a constant hearing. Some people say, well, you know, Pastor Prince, I heard all this before. Heard. That's where your mistake is. You heard. Just because you ate chicken rice last two weeks, does that mean you won't eat chicken rice again? You can apply that to your own life. When it comes, God's Word is spiritual food. Even though I know how chicken rice tastes, tastes like, only yesterday, by the way, I love chicken rice, okay? It's my, one of my favorite. Uh, you know any, any good place? Write to the office, let me know, okay? <laughs> I hate it when I, when I taste chicken that's not good, all right? I, I love chicken rice. Okay, the thing is this. I know how it tastes. I eat it so much. Yet, sometimes my wife will say, chicken rice again. I love chicken rice, okay? In fact, I love something that constantly feeds me, that I can still constantly enjoy, and yet I'm getting fresh things all the time from my chicken rice. How much more? Spiritual things, amen? So it's not a matter of... 
Faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. It's the hearing of faith. Notice the hearing of faith. Hear good preaching. Preaching, uh, listen, good preaching is ram's horn is what proclaiming the Lord's death. It's not just a blasting sound. It is not just a silver trumpet blasting, all right, calling for pr- songs and praise and dance. It's a, it's a sound that proclaims the Lord's death. Amen. Are you listening? And that must go before the ark. So whatever it is, you proclaim the Lord's death and the Bible says, I, I didn't show you just now, but it says the ark followed them. It's one thing to follow Jesus, but it seems like the Lord is attracted to ministries that proclaim the Lord's death. Amen. Aren't you glad to hear this? Everything you need is in the Lord's death. If you are sick and that disease is attacking your body 24-7, you should be listening constantly. You should have a earphone, whether you're driving, whether you are you are, you know, put, um, put on, the, on the Bluetooth you're driving, but if, whether you are eating, whatever it is, redeem the time. That disease don't have an off day. That disease will not say, I'm taking a break today. I'm tired of attacking your body. So if you have been diagnosed with such, listen to the word. Listen to the word. Listen to the word. Something may not be happening the first day, second day, third day, you're listening. Fourth day, nothing is happening. Five days, nothing is happening. Six days, I think I'll give up. Your seventh day is coming. You gave up too soon. Amen. From Joseph Prince comes a brand new book, Give Me This Mountain. Give Me This Mountain is based on the life of a man of faith in the Bible called Caleb. At 85 years old, he stood at the foot of a little mountain that everyone said was impossible to conquer. And he uttered these very words, Give Me This Mountain. There is so much for us to learn from Caleb's story when it comes to real, raw, and authentic faith. Every part of this book, the cover, the content, the images chosen, and even the way the book has been laid out was designed to create the experience of taking an expedition with the Lord. Over four weeks, we'll cover four base camps of faith. At each base camp, you'll get to explore a new aspect of faith and learn how to apply it in your life. At the end of each day's reading, there is an Own the Word section where you can engage with thought-provoking reflections and activities that will help you apply what you just learned in the context of your own life. I really believe that as you take this journey, you'll begin to walk in God's ways of faith and surmount every mountain in your life. God bless you. Joseph Prince's brand new book, Give Me This Mountain, is now available. Find out more at josephprince.com mountain. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.